Next up, we have uh, Richard Parks. Richard is a former Wales international rugby union player. Sorry, Pip, that is a cooler job description than yours. Um, <laughs> former rugby player turned extreme environment athlete. As a professional rugby player and back row forward, Richard made a name for himself as a hard and prolific tackler. Following his forced retirement from rugby, he's turned his attention to attempting some incredible feats of endurance, which he's going to share with us this evening. So please welcome Richard Parks. Thanks, Al. Thanks, Al. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, not having the mindset or the mental toolbox to be resilient uh, and agile um, can often um, be the limiting factor in our life's journeys. Statistics suggest that today the average person will change jobs 12 times throughout, um, throughout their career. And the world that our children are inheriting is different, with different challenges to, to, the, one, to the one that we experienced. I would argue that adventure um, equips us with the skills to, to better... Um, to better perform in the dynamic world that we're living in, and is also an important, often missing part of young people's development. Now, I am inherently insecure. As a professional rugby player, I considered this a weakness, a terrible character flaw that I, I never spoke about. I certainly never spoke about it. Um, I certainly never spoke about it publicly. However, it was, it was injury. It was when injury ended my career I fell into quite a deep, um, quite a dark uh, and deep depression as I wrestled the reality that my life would no longer be the same. But it was mountains that helped save my, uh, the, it was mountains that saved my life. And channeling my energies and emotions into climbing gave me a purpose. Um, and it also helped me develop the skills and the self-awareness that has irreversibly changed my life, changed my life for the better. In 2011, I became the first person to climb the highest mountain on each of the world's seven continents and stand on the North and the South Pole in the same calendar year, completing that world first project um, in seven months. And although my rugby career was plagued with fear, um, <clears throat> And, and although my rugby career is plagued with fear, terrified of making a mistake, uh, terrified of making a mistake of being dropped, um, adventure has helped me channel those insecurities, changing my biggest weakness into, into my biggest strength. I'm still scared now, terrified tonight. Um, uh, <laughs> how, I'd be foolish not to be in some of the environments I performed. But now my fear is healthy and it drives my meticulous attention to detail. <clears throat> I'd argue that I wouldn't have been able to complete my 737 challenge without the self-awareness and tools that adventure had, has given me. Now, scared of dropping through the sea ice on the North Pole leg of my 737 challenge and to develop the resilience to manage the worst should that happen, I needed to know, I needed to know what it felt like to be hypothermic. <laughs> so, every day... So every day, over three days, I would be lowered into a cold water immersion tank with my core temperature dropped to, dropped to clinical hypothermia. Then I'd be pulled out um, and wrapped in a survival blanket for an hour while scientists monitored uh, different electrodes attached to me. Now that's horrific. It, it really is as horrific as, uh, as it sounds, but the worst bit of that was that one special thermometer that came with, <laughs> that came with a tub of Vaseline. Regardless, <laughs> regardless, that level of expedition um, development was critical to my success. Day one of the penultimate leg of my 737 challenge, just two hours outside of base camp on Mount McKinley, one of the world's most ferocious mountains, I fell seven meters into a crevasse. My ability to stay composed, um, to communicate with my climbing partner above me, uh, as I was trapped for over an hour on the ledge that broke my fall, was a direct result of the experience that I had in the cold water immersion cha chamber. Resilience can be developed, as can, and a, an important part of that is a positive relationship with failure. 
As a rugby player, success was black and white to me. On any given weekend, I either won or I lost. However, adventure has helped me understand that there are many shades of success in between. And I would argue that failure is the most important part of the process to any achievement. It's certainly my, uh, certainly my experience. And in a world where success can be guaranteed with resource or, or money, adventure is a, a wonderful antidote to, to that sort of... Uh, <laughs> Should really pay attention to those, shouldn't I? Is a, is a wonderful antidote to that uh, to that st- to, to that sterility. Um, and sometimes, though, it's not about learning. Sometimes, it happens. And I said it there. Um, I was conscious there might be some young people in the audience. Um, but it happens, and things go wrong, and we're faced with the question: Do we persevere? Do we adapt? Do we keep moving forward, um, or do we give up? Now, adversity has the effect of eliciting talents and knowledge which in prosperous circumstances would remain dormant. Um, <clears throat> would remain dormant. And adventure challenges us to step outside of our comfort zone. Now, it doesn't have to be extreme. This is something I feel really, really passionately about. For me, simply getting moving following my injury inspired me out of that dark place. And I've never been more inspired than watching my mum on her 70th birthday go swimming in the sea in Ogmore on the South Wales coast. Or watch my 80-year-old dad strap himself into the fastest zip line in the world um, in, in Snowdonia. Now, if we break adventure down in even, even further, for me, the spirit of adventure is simply having the courage to step outside of our comfort zone and do something, or sorry, to start a journey that we can't predict um, we can't predict the destination. Now, I would have never dreamt pulling on my Welsh jersey that I would have skied in one of the world's uh, greatest wildernesses or climbed to the, to the roof of the world. Um, <clears throat> but we all have our mountains, and embracing the spirit of adventure can have such a positive impact on all our life's experiences. Now, it doesn't have to be Antarctica, it doesn't have to be Everest, but I challenge you guys to step outside of your comfort zones and to do something that you've never done before this month. So, thank you very much.